This is the solution to random math stat problem number 182. In this problem, we're given a joint PDF and we're asked some questions. In part A, we want to determine whether X and Y are independent. The short answer is no, because if we look at the support of the joint PDF, it is a triangular region that looks like this. That is enough to say that they are not independent. Remember, we proved in class that you have independence if you can factor the joint PDF into an X part and a Y part, including the indicators, which means the region needs to be rectangular. If you want to go the more traditional route and actually work out the marginal PDFs, you can do that as well. Here's the region again to give us an idea of what our limits of integration should be. The marginal PDF for x is the integral of the joint PDF over all values of y. In particular, our joint PDF is 3x, and for any particular x, y can run from 0 to x. We get 3x squared, and this is for any x between 0 and 1. The PDF is 0 otherwise. The marginal PDF for y is the integral of the joint PDF over all the values of x. Plugging in the actual PDF of 3x over the actual region of integration, for a particular y, x is allowed to go from y to 1. We get this integral. Computing the integral, we get 3 halves times 1 minus y squared. This holds for any y between 0 and 1, and the PDF is 0 otherwise. So given these two marginal PDFs and how complicated they look, it's easy to see that multiplying them together will not give us the original PDF of 3x. We have therefore shown again that x and y are not independent. For part b of this problem, we want to find the expected value of x. The definition of the expected value of x when x is continuous as it is here is the integral of x times the PDF for x. This is the marginal PDF for x, so if you took the short answer to part a, you would now have to find that marginal PDF for x. We already found it though. It is 3x squared on the region from 0 to 1. So putting an x in front of it, we end up with the integral of 3x cubed from 0 to 1 and an answer of 3 fourths. In part c, we want to find the variance for x. Given that we already have the expected value of x, it's going to be easiest to find the expected value of x squared and use our expression for variance that says the variance of x is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared. The expected value of x squared is the integral of x squared times the marginal PDF for x. Plugging in what that PDF is over its support, we get the integral from 0 to 1 of 3x to the 4th dx, and we get that this expected value is 3 fifths. To finish off this variance problem, we put it all together. The variance of x is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared, which gives us 3 eightieths. For the final part of this problem, we want to rewrite this joint PDF using indicators. There are two ways to do this. One is to say that, looking up here, x ultimately goes from 0 to 1, and for any fixed x, y is between 0 and x. We can write a product of indicators like this. This product is going to be 1 whenever this and this is 1 at the same time, and that takes care of the two conditions given by this set of inequalities up here. Equivalently, we can say that we want y to be between 0 and 1, and for any fixed y, we want x to be above y and below 1. So this is an equivalent expression to write our joint PDF in one line using indicators.